The difference is that it now accepts the elements of liberalism C to a larger extent. As a result, there is a skirmish between, between the two poles of state capitalism and liberalism over which should receive relative preference. These poles are basically represented by two large parties in, in, in any given nation, although the names of the political parties vary from place to place. Finally, what Chomsky most favors is libertarian socialism, D. Uh, while rejecting welfare state capitalism, B, uh, this type of government at the same time denies uh, state socialism and seeks liberal socialism. Chomsky includes anarchism and council communism uh, in this category. <clears throat> Needless to say, what Chomsky had in mind was a new left movement which arose in the late 1960s. This movement opposed not only Stalinism or state capitalism, but also the welfare state and soft state control. And this movement revives the early socialist traditions of anarchism and council communism. Chomsky put them all together under the name of uh, libertarian socialism. But I'd like to call this associationism. The, the important thing is not what we call it, uh, but understanding what the system means. Otherwise, no words can make sense. The D uh, differs from the rest A, B, C. The largest difference is that D has never existed in reality, even if it has existed momentarily. While A, B, and C are subordinates to either capital or nation or state, uh, D has a will to go beyond them. This is something like the idea that cannot exist in reality. Even if it does not exist in reality, it won't cease to work as a regulative idea, uh, to use Kant's phrase, uh, word. <clears throat> in this lecture, Chomsky speaks as if these four are optional, but today it is apparent that this was the world structure at the point of 1968 and that it is no longer present today. For instance, the crux of the state socialism was disclosed by the downfall of the Soviet bloc, but its influence on developed countries had already weakened before the point, that point. It was unpopular partly because of the fact, uh, along with the realization of welfare state B, the attractions of socialism, uh, such as zero un un unemployment, has already faded. Libertarian socialism, D, came in sight as a denial of both, of both welfare state capitalism and the Soviet type of so state socialism. However, what is most significant here is that the state communism, A, uh, lost its power. So did libertarian socialism, D. In its attempts to realize its ideal, uh, progressively, libertarian socialism, D, ended up becoming equally as, or even more cruel than state communism, A. Uh, this trend is epitomized in the desperate violent uh, uh, <coughs> actions, uh, the internally and externally uh, directed terrorism that occurred within the uh, radical new left movement of the United States, uh, Italy, Germany, Japan, and elsewhere. So in Japan, this phenomenon is widely recognized in the Red Army incident, the internal purges of the new left. The result was that an attitude of denying all ideas as narratives became widespread 
This is an attitude that came to be called postmodernism. The postmodernism had a certain critical value while the Soviet bloc seems to enduring. But in the 1990s, it ended up becoming nothing more than a form of cynicism that affirms the unbridled deconstructive mo movement of capitalism. The decline of D constitutes a decline in the power, in the power to think or imagine beyond the capitalist nation state. <coughs> As I explained in the beginning, because the welfare state social democracy, B, was originally motivated by the need for uh, self-justification in the face of the state socialism, A, it could not maintain its motive. If A disappears, then the, the motivation for B is weakened. In such a case, it is only natural for liberalism or global capitalism to swallow up the entire world. The social democracy B is a counterforce against this today, but it, it is no more than a modest resistance, a minor revision that does not present any, anything new. For instance, in the United States, the two major parties, the Republican and Democrats, contend with each other, but in many ways, their differences are next to nothing. In Britain, the Labour Party takes over the Thatcherism or, or neoliberalism of the Conservative Party. Uh, such a phenomenon can be seen everywhere in advanced nations, uh, industrial nations. As a result, we see more frequent changes of administration, but this also brings about an apathy to politics in general, since it makes little difference to whoever may win. People are apathetic because there's no choice beyond these two. It is the absence of the idea or imagination, D, that is causing such, an ap such apathy. Uh, <clears throat> to this point, I have been de dealing with ad advanced industrial societies, but what about the developing nations? Those nations which used to identify themselves as a third world were divided into two parties in the process of globalization. Some countries, such as China or India, were rapidly industrialized, while the less, such as African countries, were uh, pushed into truly desperate conditions. A kind of state communism, A, uh, still remains in some parts, but no longer maintains its attraction. The imagination to get out of capital nation state has been totally lost. Generally speaking, the gap between, uh, caused by the downfall of the idea of socialism has been filled, filled by religious fundamentalism. In a certain sense, Fundamentalism aims at going beyond the capital nation state, but it, on, it can only lead to a, the dictatorship of the clergy or church state, which, which is similar to state communism, A. Uh, 